Hey, welcome everyone. It's uh, Pastor Nate here and I have a, uh, a message for you. Today is Sunday, April 26th and we are excited about what God's doing in this season. Um, I have a message for you. You know, there's a lot of uh, things out there and it's who do you trust? Who do you listen to? Uh, I said so the title of my message this week is Trust Factors, but before we get started into the message, I'm going to have my son Trey sing a song and welcome into and welcome the presence of God. So just right where you are in your home or wherever you're staying, allow the presence of God to fill the place that you're in so that you can receive God's word for your life. God bless. We're, I'll talk to you in here in about three, or, three to five minutes. Cause there's nothing worth more That'll ever come close No thing can compare You are our living hope Your presence, Lord I've tasted and seen Shame is tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free in my shame
All right. Praise God. The presence of God is here. We welcome the Holy Spirit into our hearts and to our minds. And um, uh, today I want to talk to you. You know, there there's a lot of things. If you turn on the news media and it seems like, you know, we're because we're all stuck at home, we're we're flipping through the channels and everything is about doom and gloom. And and then you have this group arguing with that group and um, this group fussing with that. And, and, and I guess, really, how do you know who to trust? H- how do you know what, who's right or who's wrong? Well, I, I want you to know that today's message is called Trust Factors, and we're going we're gonna to start out in the book of Psalm, chapter uh, 91, and verse 1 and 2. And this is what, that, this is what uh, Psalm 91 says. It says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. He is my fortress. My God in Him I will trust. We need to put our trust back in God. And, and, I, and I believe that what, what, what's happening is that we've lost the art of debate. uh, Today, it's either you absolutely believe 100% with somebody and you disagree 100%. And and we're missing the truth that's in the middle of that. And if we we even acknowledge that uh, the person that we're debating with might be right in one area, then it becomes a... Well, you're condoning all of what they're saying. And, and I think a lot of times we're missing that truth. And, and, but the truth comes from God. Trust, our trust is in God. Our trust, I mean, yes, we trust that, um, that God, the leaders that we pray for will make the right decisions. But our trust is in God. Yes, we trust God for our, you know, that, hey, our check's going to come in the mail and that we're going to be fine. But it, it comes back to God, and, and yeah, he speaks to us through people, and he speaks to us through circumstances. But I think one of the things that has happened to us as people, we have had experiences that have tested our trust in God, and then what happens is that we allow thoughts to be planted in our mind that, that doubt God. Folks, I want you to know today, if you haven't heard it anywhere else, you're going to hear it here. This, today we are in a battle between good and evil. The lines are being drawn. And God is good. The Bible is true. And guess what? It's working in my life. But see, sometimes we begin to go down a path and then something happens and then we immediately want to say, we, are, we lose our trust in God because you know why? At that weak point, the enemy tries to come in and plant those thoughts. You know, you know in, the, in the news media, they're just doing their job. I mean, you know, they, they, make their, they get their viewership off of natural disasters. Uh, you, know, nine, what, you know, 9-11 when there was a mass shooting, school shootings. You know, if you have a, a, a smartphone, you, you, you know, if you get any news things, it's always breaking news. Everything's a, a breaking news story. Why? Because they are fighting to get you to watch their channel. And, 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 and they found that people don't want to, you know, people aren't going to necessarily tune in to hear the good news. And, 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 but I want you to know that today you're hearing the good news. And the good news is that God is is not dead, he's still alive, and what he's doing in your life, in you, is greater than anything that might be happening to you. See, if you listen to the media, if you think, and, and you come across the, let's, let's use the coronavirus, people automatically think, man, you're going to die. Well, well, that's why, because the news media reports how many cases and how many deaths, but more people are surviving it than are dying from it. And that is not to make light of the families who have lost loved ones. I pray for them. I, 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 I you know, but, but people die from the flu. People die from the cancer, you, from cancer. You don't think twice about the food you put in your body that it may develop cancer. You don't live in that fear, but we live in fear. Why? Because 
thoughts are being planted in our mind every time we open ourselves up to the propaganda that's out there. And, I, and as Christians and, and as people who are seeking truth, we need to be looking to God and his word. I want to go to Psalm uh, chapter, uh, or I want to go down to verse number three and four. And this is what, what he continues to say. He says, surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the a perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wing you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and your buckler. His truth. What is his truth? The truth is in his word. The truth is that if you trust in God, that he's going to see you through it. And even the Bible tells us to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. My Lord, heaven is, is full with streets of gold and, and, and it's paradise. And, and when Jesus died, he said, I go to prepare a place for you. You can't threaten me with heaven today. So, so and, and, I, and I'm, a, I'm a person that's had some experiences where I, where I faced the death angel in the face. But two years old, a uh, coma, a diabetic coma, uh, blindness, woke up during the surgery, um, kidney failure. And just recently, I was on life support and, and, in, and spent 23 days in the hospital. But I want to tell you this, that my trust is in God, that he breathed his breath in these lungs. And, and because you're listening today and you're breathing, that same breath is in your lungs. The differences between Myself and some other people is I believe and I trust in God. And we need to put that trust in him. He'll see you through it. And, and even under death, he, we're delivered from the curse of eternal life separated from him. I'm going to go on and read in, in verse 5 and 6. And, and it says this. It says, you shall not be afraid. That's a word for somebody right now. You shall not be afraid. You shall not be afraid to die. You shall not be afraid of any sickness, disease. You shall not be afraid. Why? Because God is still in, in, in the healing business. He's still a miracle worker. He's still working things out for the good for those who love him according to his purpose. Are you living in his purpose? So, so, so today the challenge is, is to trust in him. Make him Lord over your life. A lot of people have made decisions. Yes, I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe he rose on the third day. But we, we, we need to cross that barrier where we say, Lord, I actually make you Lord of my life. And I let you into every situation in my life. And every care that I have in my life, I cast that care upon you. Because you know why? I know that you care and that you love me. And that we need to be convinced of that love. And he says this. He says, you shall not be afraid of the terror of night, nor of the arrow that uh, flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. I'm telling you today, we're going to get on the other side of this. We're going to get on the other side of this pandemic and everything else. But I, but I also want you to know that this is, there's going to be other things that test your faith. There's going to be other things that test the church as a whole. And today, today there is a clarion call to the church to seek the face of God, to seek him, to trust him, to get into his word because there's something he wants to do in you and there's something that he wants to do through you that's going to make this world a better place. Hey, God bless. I'm Nate Freeman. I hope you like this message. I hope you share this message because people need to hear the truth. They need to be encouraged by the word of God. He's still a deliverer. Jesus said, I came I am the way, the truth, and the life. He's the way to life. He said, I came to give you life, and I get, came to give it to you more abundantly. You're not to be bound by the shackles of fear or have that, that around your neck. He wants to deliver you from that. Just remember, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but God came to give you life. I, 
I hope you share this message. Also, if you are if you belong to First Christian Church or you like to give to our ministry, you can send those checks into uh, the P.O. Box below. I believe it's P.O. Box 987 here in Steubenville, Ohio, 43952. God bless you. I'm praying for you. If you need anything, private message me. Uh, you can download our app. I'll, I'll respond to the prayer message, uh, request there as well. But God is still on his throne, and he's looking out for you. Stay under his wing. God bless you.